Today we're going to dive into the basics of Turbo Native. We're going to walk through how to go from a mobile web Rails website into using Turbo Native on the simulator. All you'll need is a copy of Xcode that you can download for free from the App Store. So let's open up Xcode and we're going to want to create a new project. You can create it through here or file new project. We're going to want to create an iOS app and I'm going to call it Turbo Native Demo. Make sure that your interface is set to storyboard, not SwiftUI. We can use SwiftUI in Turbo Native, but we don't want a Turbo Native, or we don't want a SwiftUI app. We want to use a storyboard. Click next. I'm going to put this on my desktop. And we now have a bare bones uh, new Xcode project. So I'm going to run this in the simulator, which we'll launch over on the right. We launch to a blank screen. So we know that works. Um, how that's working is that main from storyboard here is what's showing. So I'm going to just demo really quick how that works by adding a label to the center of the screen that says hello world and center that. When I run this now, we should see that little label pop up right in the center of the screen. So storyboards are really great for native, fully native apps. They let you can lay out all of your kind of hierarchy and, and flow between screens all in this one visual page. Don't work so well with Turbo Native, unfortunately. So we're going to delete that and kind of do it from scratch. So we're going to move that main storyboard to the trash. We're going to open up our info P list and open up all of these half chevrons and get down into storyboard name and click delete to get rid of that. And finally, open up the project under targets, build settings, and then delete this main storyboard file base name. So now we have absolutely, absolutely nothing in our app and we won't even be able to launch. So we're gonna to wanna to open the scene delegate here and delete everything in it except this top method that is scene will connect to. Uh, iOS has the concept of scenes where you can have multiple kind of windows of your app running at the same time. Think an iPad split screen app or you know, text editor multi documents open. We're only going to use one, so it's a little bit simpler for us. So we're going to want to grab a window scene here uh, from the, what's passed into us. And then we're going to want to wire this up. So we're going to grab our window here, so we have a property called window, and assign it via that window scene. This allows us to create an actual visual window that the app can run on. And we'll want to set that window uh, root view controller to a plain old view controller. And then finally, make it invisible. So we run this now, we're gonna just see a completely blank screen that's black. View controllers have a default background color of transparent and our window is black underneath it. So we just see nothing. To prove that it's working though, we're gonna add a background color to that, got a question mark here because it's optional. Uh, we're gonna add a background color of orange to show that that's actually working. So now we have a totally bare bones app where we could actually start uh, adding things to this root view controller. So the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is in get Turbo Native into our app. So to do that, we're gonna open back up our file explorer over here. We're gonna click our project, click our project, not our target, and go to package dependencies. This is where we can add Swift packages. I like to use this over CocoaPods or Carthage because it's built into Xcode. Click the plus sign here, and it's gonna ask for any URL, kind of like how you would point to a Git URL in a gem file. I'll open up Safari, and I already have the Turbo iOS repo open. And I'm gonna copy and paste that URL right into this search bar here. It'll find it for us. It'll give us the readme and click add package. Make sure that it's checked. It's added to our demo target, the only one we have, and click add package again. We now have access to our entire, the entire code base. So the docs, we have the, the source files. It's kind of like we did gem open or bundle open over here. To use it though, we need to import it. So first we will import turbo. And to work with turbo, we have screens that are presented on top of each other. 
And on top of each other in iOS is usually handled by a stack of screens, which on iOS is called a navigation controller. I have here the settings app open in the simulator. If I click into general, you'll notice that nice animation that slides in. We get the back button. We can go deeper. We can pop out. This is called a navigation controller and it works with a stack of different screens drilling down into a hierarchy of different types of objects or, or views and so forth. We're gonna be using this to replicate different screens and the forward and backwards of a browser. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is create a private variable called navigation controller. And instead of assigning this view, plain old view controller as the root, we're gonna assign it to our navigation controller here. Now when we run this, we'll see a little bar across the top that shows that we have a navigation controller running. This is the kind of default styling of something with a black screen. But we actually wanna do something with it. We wanna push a screen on top of it. So let's pull out a private function called visit. And here we're gonna create a controller instead. We're gonna do the same thing. Set the background color this time to green. And we're gonna take our navigation controller and we're going to push this controller on top of it. When you push a controller on top of a navigation controller, the first one will just appear, but the second one will slide in the way we want it to. So when I run this, we should have a green screen because we set the background color of that to green. We'll be reusing this pattern of pushing view controllers over and over as we click on links in our app. So now that we have a basic understanding of how a navigation controller works, Let's instead swap it out for a visitable view controller. A visitable view controller is what works on Turbo Native to manage your web view, uh, kind of position your web view, do all of the pull to refresh that you want. It's kind of like the core controller of the app that we want to work with. This works best with a URL. And for us, we're going to be giving it a URL pointing to our local server. I'm going to use an explanation point to force unwrap that to show the compiler that we know that that is a real URL. And then when we push this, nothing will happen. We don't, nothing is happening because on its own, a visible view controller doesn't do anything. It doesn't actually, it just manages the web view. We still need to actually visit the URL. So to do that, we need a session. A session is the object in Turbo Native that visits screens, pops them onto kind of your, your hierarchy, your forward and back. It's the adapter that hooks into the JavaScript for turbo.js. And for us, we'll use it to visit screens. So here we're saying visit this controller, this visitable view controller by pushing it, by advancing it on our back stack in the browser. We'll run this again with command R and we'll see that we now have loaded content. We now have a fully functioning web view uh, that is rendered inside of our app pointing to our local rail server. Unfortunately, clicking links does not do anything. So we've only visited the first screen. We need to tell, we need to let the framework let us know when a new screen is pushed or when a new link is pushed so we can push a new screen. So to do that, we need to become the delegate. So what we're gonna do here is take this session and make it a lazy variable, which means that when it gets first um, you know, accessed, it will then run this block of code and set that permanently. So we're gonna to wanna to create a session and then return the session. So right now this doesn't do anything different than before, except it's a lazy, lazy computed. But here we're gonna say that the sessions delegate equals self, self meaning scene delegate here. If I try to build this though, it's gonna say that we cannot assign a type value scene delegate to type session delegate. Essentially saying that the scene delegate does not conform to the protocol that session delegate needs. There's no duct typing in Ruby. We actually need to explicitly fulfill contracts with other parts of our app. To do that, we can use an extension. We'll say extension scene delegate, the file that we're in, you can notice up here, conforms to the session delegate protocol. If I build that, you'll notice that this error goes away because we now conform to that protocol, but we don't actually conform to the protocol. So we can use the compiler to add to, to give us protocol stubs by clicking fix. For some reason, I need to do it twice with this one. I've done this so many times. 
Uh, the second time it will get all three. All three of those are ones that we'll want to implement in a production app, but we're going to ignore two of them for now. So did fail request, I'm just gonna move it underneath. Did fail request essentially says an error happened. So we're gonna just add a to do here, handle errors. And then session web view process did terminate essentially means that the web view died because it ran out of memory and we wanna restart the app or kind of like tell the user that they need to restart it or something like that. But for now, we're gonna handle a dead web view later. The one that we care about is this one, session did propose visit. And session did propose visit means that the user clicked a link in the form of a visit proposal. So borrowing code from up here, we're gonna to wanna to do the same thing. We're gonna to wanna to create a controller and the URL is now coming from the proposal. This is kind of a way of wrapping different parts of the visit, not just the URL. We're gonna to wanna to tell the session to visit that controller, but this time we're gonna pass in options and give it the proposal options. Options have all sorts of fun stuff in it, like advance or replace for which direction it should go. It also will ma maintain your cache. So if this is a restoration visit, they'll actually have the rendered HTML in there and the session will know to just plop that in instead of actually requesting a new page load. And finally, we'll want to push that view controller onto the stack. Now, when we run this app with command R, we'll see that we can click a link and we get a new screen pushed. So just with a few lines of code, we have pretty much a kind of functioning, you know, iOS app built on our, our Rails server here. There's one more thing that I want to talk about though, that is a little janky right now. We kind of have all of this, whoops. We kind of have all of this uh, like cruft up at the top here. We have this board game shelf. We have this hamburger menu. We have this title that matches up here. It doesn't feel very iOS. So to do that, we're gonna tell our server that we're a turbo native app and let the server hide different screens or hide different content on the page. To do that, we're gonna use a user agent. So up here, we had a session. We're gonna to wanna to import WebKit and create a WebKit configuration. This configuration is a way to configure the web view and tell it what type of properties or, or settings it can have. And for us, we care about the user agent name, application name for user agent. We're gonna set this to turbo native iOS. What this does is it appends that at the end of the default username, user agent. So the server will get, you know, WebKit slash Mozilla, iPhone 16.4, and at the end it'll say Turbo Native iOS. We'll pass that configuration into our session right here, and we'll run the app. And you'll notice that this looks a whole lot better. We've hidden a bunch of content on the screen. It doesn't have the double H1, and we now even have something that looks way more like an iOS app. But how does that work under the hood? Turbo native is a special string. If I open up the turbo rails documentation and I pull open a file called app controllers, turbo native navigation, there's a helper called turbo native app. You can include this module in any of your controllers or views to get access to this, but all it really does is check the user agent to see if there's a turbo native string inside of it. If so, this helper responds with true. We can then use this on our server to hide elements or show elements, whatever works best for what you're trying to build. And that concludes how to get started with Turbo Native on iOS. I hope this was helpful. If it was, please let me know in the comments and I will see you next time. Thank you.